Nigeria and Cameroon have coexisted for so long as uh, brothers and sisters. And uh, because of certain disagreements, Cameroon decided to approach the International Court of Justice with the prayers that the boundary between Nigeria and Cameroon be properly defined. Initially, it started with claim over Bakasi. Eventually, it extended over the entire stretch, starting from the Lake Chad, passing through all the states of uh, Boronu, Adamawa, Taraba, Benue, Cross River, and Apribo, up to the sea. So um, the court took about eight years with submissions, counter motions, motions by the two nations. After eight years, the court ruled and gave judgment on the 10th of October in 2002. The judgment is also clearly stated in the main submission. But the cross of the matter is that the International Court of Justice agreed that they were not to tamper with existing boundaries between Nigeria and Cameroon. All they did was to reaffirm the existing boundaries based on the documents submitted by both parties. So, and the documents that the, the parties rely upon are the boundary, are the documents that were inherited by the colonial masters. The Anglo-German Treaty, the Anglo-French Treaty of 1931, which we call the Thompson Merchant Declaration. We have the 1946 British Order in Council and the Anglo-German Treaty. These are treaties and uh, agreements that define portions of the boundary. It's not, it's not one document that we define, define the entire stretch. In fact, the Nigeria Cameroon boundary is about 200 and, I mean, 2,100 kilometers in length. A very large uh, expanse of uh, uh, boundary stretch. And we have these three major documents defining sectors of the boundary. The sector in question, the relevant document is the Anglo-German Treaty of 1913. And that document defines the boundary from Pillar 64 up to Pillar 114 around the bank of Cross River. So we'll narrow the issue to this relevant document. Like uh, we all know, after about eight years of arguments, submissions, proposals, counter-arguments by the two nations, the International Court of Justice gave its judgment. The court decided to uphold the Anglo-German Anglo agreement of 11th March 1913. Okay. Now, the, the, the Anglo-German Treaty, Treaty of, of March 1913 states and describes the boundary that through Pillar 1110 on the Abo Bam Road, Pillar 11 Pillar 11, Pillar 11, I mean 111, on the North Danary Bodam Road. Pillar 112, on the South Danary Bodam Road. Pillar 113, on the Baje German Baje Danary Road, to Pillar 113A, about six miles distant from Pillar 113. In other words, this document, which we inherited, describe the boundary very, very copiously in that sector. Starting from pillar, 110, pillar, 10, pillar 110 to pillar 11, pillar 112, pillar 113, and the controversial pillar 113A. And it described that pillar to be six miles from pillar 113. And it also says from pillar 113A, 
The boundary runs in a straight line to Pillar 114 at a bend in the Cross River, about two and a half miles upstream from Obokum on the north bank of this river. It also had this caveat that in case the above description of the boundary does not agree exactly with the boundary as shown on the maps accompanying the present agreement, and which are regarded as forming an integral part thereof, it is expressly understood that the position of the boundary as shown on the maps shall decide any dispute. In other words, the accompanying map is also very key and very important. And that, this is one of the accompanying maps. Then, um, you, um, okay. Now, this is also a map attached to the agreement. The pillar 113A, I think it's around here. Pillar, one, pillar 13 is about here. And pillar 114 is somewhere here. Now, this pillar 13, unfortunately, it could not be easily found during the field exercise. But with all these documents, this treaty and maps, the technical experts were able to approximate the position. And the position was jointly identified and agreed by Nigeria, Cameroon, under the auspices of the United Nations. And for that to be done, a very thorough and extensive field exercise was undertaken by officials of the two countries with the United Nations, and aided with the maps and the, the interpretation of the International Court of, uh, Court of uh, Justice uh, judgment. For us to implement the provisions of the International Court of Judgment, the governments of Nigeria and Cameroon under the auspices of the United Nations, established what we now know as the Cameroon-Nigeria Miss Commission. It has equal representations from the two parties and the United Nations. It's shared by the United Nations. But before even the judgment was passed, the then Secretary General of the United Nations, may so rest in peace, Mr. Kopianan, convened a meeting of the heads of states of Nigeria and Cameroon to deliberate and brainstorm, where he, now he got the, 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 the assurances of the leaders of these two nations that the two nations are brothers and, and, and they are ready to coexist peacefully and they are ready to abide by the rulings of the International Court of Justice. And Nigeria did not stop at that. Nigeria also took, at, a, at the highest level, had some very, very, secure, uh, very, very top level engagement of relevant officials of Nigerians to discuss within Nigeria the likely outcome and the position of Nigeria. So all this, based on all, other, all analysis, the government agreed that they were also ready to accept the rulings of the International Court of Justice. So when the International Court of Justice ruling was passed, Nigeria embraced it as also Cameroon. And uh, they decided that they should establish what we call the Cameroon Nigeria Miss Commission. That Miss Commission is saddled with responsibilities of ensuring the implementations of the provisions of the International Court of Justice. They were to make sure that all the affected communities are properly catered for. The territories affected are identified. Authorities are withdrawn from uh, relevant areas, as the case may be. The boundary is traced and demarcated and made visible. And uh, to do that, the Miss Commission constituted some other subcommittees, subcommissions, commissions on uh, affected populations, those that were to handle. Uh, issues of withdrawals. So all these other uh, sub-commissions worked and carried out their assignments successfully to the acceptance of both nations and the United Nations, the, the coordinating body. 
The only outstanding sub-commission that is still working is the sub-commission on demarcation. That is to demarcate physically the boundary as ruled by the International Court of Justice. The demarcation exercise started from the Lake Chad, where we have a trapezoidal point of Nigeria, Cameroon, Niger, and we have traversed the entire stretch of boundary, the entire 2,100 2, kilometer stretch of the boundary to identify positions, likely positions, of where these pillars should be placed. In so doing, communities that were affected, settlements that were affected along the boundary were identified. Those that were Nigerian uh, settlements that fell on the Cameroonian side were also identified. Those Cameroonian communities that fell on the Nigerian side were also identified. And issues and processes of handing them over appropriately to the appropriate administrations were also agreed upon. That was why when Nigeria, Nigeria had cost to lose about 33 villages along, around the Lake Chad. These are Nigerian settlements that had followed the receding of the Lake Chad and were moving. And they did not even know when they crossed and were fully into the territory of Cameroon. And as we are going along the boundary, we discovered that there are some communities who do not know exactly where they belong. But with the tracing of boundary, they were told that, look, you are Nigerians, but you are on the wrong side. You are Cameroonians, you are also on the wrong side. And the governments of the two countries arranged and handed over and took over some of these communities as appropriate. Nigeria had an elaborate program of resettling communities of Nigerians that were affected. So now, as we move down, we now got to the, um, the sector under discussion. Let us, at this point, make it clear that the work of the Cameroon Nigerian Commission is not to re-establish, I mean, it's not to adjust any boundary. It's just to re-establish the boundary as judge and uh, decided by Inter the International Court of Justice based on all the agreements we inherited, the Ang Anglo-French, Anglo-German, and the British in Council documents that were all tendered, analyzed, and used to now define the boundary between Nigeria and Cameroon. So it's a boundary that is a legal boundary. And of course, it's not a boundary that is decided by one party. It's an international boundary, which is binding, and has already agreed by the African leaders as far back as 1964, during the Cairo Declaration, that they were ready to abide by the boundaries inherited from the colonial masters. So it's, 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 uh, it's binding on parties to respect these boundaries. What was a little bit uh, uh, ambiguous was where exactly is this boundary? Because these are boundaries that were established as far back as 1913, 1931, 1946, many years back. But with these documents and the pronouncement of the International Court of Justice, a boundary based on the correct interpretation of these documents was re-established. And the, the, the mandate of the, the Cameroon Nigerian Mist Commission under the sub-commission on demarcation is to now follow this description diligently and re-establish this boundary. And that's what we've been doing. We have in place, so far in place, over 2,200 pillars, starting from the lecture at intervals to make the boundary very cost-to-cost and visible. So when we go to the, the, the sector of the cross river, this work of the uh, Cameroon Nigerian Mist Commission is handled under the auspices of the United Nations, and most of the, the activities are contracted out to international contractors, supervised by the UN and officials of both parties. So we have, they have, we have witnessed the, the contracting of portions of these boundaries in separate lots. Lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lost seven is the one we had just finished. 
As at the point of lot four, the contract for the emplacement of these pillars along the Crossover State Axis in 2014 was awarded. But Crossover State refused to cooperate and that contract was aborted. That portion of the contract was aborted. We kept on discussing with Crossover, sensitizing them. Again, in the Lost Seven, that portion was also, was also included in the, in the last contract. At the point of execution, the same Crossover State raised objection and protested. And of course, it's, the, it's, it's one of the principles of the United Nations that they will not want to be party to anything that will be violent that will result in loss of lives. And uh, it can be recalled that during this, the, the, the execution of this, of this uh, demarcation exercise along Nigeria Cameroon, we had cause to lose five experts in 2017 when they were attacked. So the United Nations decided that no work could be undertaken unless each party provides adequate security provided by the military. And that was the basis for which we resumed work to continue with the implementation of Lot 4 up to Lot uh, 7. The military of Nigeria had given all, all assurances that they were ready to provide necessary security. But when we sense that the people of Cross River State particularly the affected communities were not ready to cooperate and they were ready to foment trouble, which will result into uh, probably loss of lives. We cautioned and we stepped down. This is the second time this exercise has been stepped down at the instance of Nigeria. It's not really portraying Nigeria in good, in, in, in good light, especially as this is a boundary that... Uh, now, now the, you can see... On the uh, left-hand side was the old pillar 113 that was reconstructed in 2014 to the standard pillar. The boundaries were, were demarcated with telegraphic poles. That was one, the one on the left-hand side is one of the source poles. So we're now replacing all these poles with standard international pillars, and that is uh, one of that. The diagrams from the uh, work of surveyors, they were able to determine that position. And the people have been sensitized. It was after they were sensitized in 2013 that they discovered that, ah, if this pillar is to be emplaced, some part of their farmlands will be shown to be within, I mean, within uh, Cameroon. And they decided to start raising oppositions. As at that time, there were two horses, just two horses, that the boundary line were put on the Cameroonian side. And of course, from the history of Nigerians and the way we move, we expand. From 2023 to date, the people have expanded, gone beyond the boundary line, right into the Cameroonian territory. So the Boundary Commission, with all other MDAs, will not support and for their arms to see an inch of Nigeria being seeded. So what we're doing is we're implementing the judgment based on all documents and all professional uh, capabilities of all parties. And we are, in no, we, are not, we, are, we are in no doubt as to the fact that the position of the pillar 113A as determined by the surveyors based on all diagram, drag, diagrams and the uh, documents is where it should be. So we assisted the people and we showed them that this is the position of pillar 113A. They discovered that most of their timber, timber farmlands will be put on the side of uh, Cameroon and the side raising opposition. We kept on pleading, sensitized them from then till recently, when we hope that they will have uh, subsided and, 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 and I will cooperate for us to now move the process forward. We, have, we segmented the emplacement of the pillars into about eight lots. Lots one, two, three, four, five, six. This, this pillar emplacement was supposed to have been done during lot four. It was aborted. We, it was reawarded during lot seven, also aborted. 
The only outstanding segment is the lot eight, which is to look at areas that were skipped and conclude the exercise. So we are at the point of concluding the exercise. So we, are, we, are, we appeal to the state. We met with the state, and the state, the position, the official position of the state was that, yes, that pillar 113A, that is the position, but we will not be ready, or our people will not be ready unless federal government meets some demands. So these are demands of the state on Nigeria, not on this international uh, uh, organization. So it's, it's an internal problem of Nigeria that they want their people whose farmlands will be lost to be properly compensated. And those that have expanded beyond the boundary line to also be properly relocated and resettled. Of course, that has nothing to do with Cameroon. It has nothing to do with the United Nations. It's a problem of Nigeria. So we advise that they should articulate their positions properly and forward to the federal government. And we appeal that they should cooperate for us, for Nigeria not to be projecting in, in, in a further bad image of not wanting to cooperate. This is something we agreed, we signed, we accepted, and we are ready to implement, and we have implemented almost 80% or even 90%. The, the, what is our science about 15 to 10%. And now they want to keep on uh, resisting that this work should uh, not be done. So it's not a question of adjustment of the boundary. It's not a question of Nigeria ceding any territory. It is the boundary that is properly now uh, identified and brought out and made visible. In so doing, some affected farmlands and uh, part, part of a uh, denary that had expanded beyond what it used to be will be affected. So it's not ceding any part of Nigeria, but now Nigeria now living up to expectation to agree to implement what the country has accepted to implement. Respect the international boundary between Nigeria and our neighbors in the spirit of African brotherhood. And we need to do that peacefully. If we keep on resisting, it will not portray us in good image. Whatever problems the people have of wanting to be properly resettled and compensated, that should be something they should take. The government of Cross State should take appropriately with the federal government. And uh, we appeal to the state to please cooperate. Let the boundary be properly concluded. It's not, there's nothing we can do about it. That's your submission. That's my submission. Thank you so much. <laughs>